Thanks for joining us. We'll be discussing today why the future of e-commerce is a headless commerce architecture. My name is Andrew Chappello, and I'm a group product manager at Recurly. Recurly is a subscription billing and management platform which works for, with thousands of brands like FabFitFun and BarkBox to help them grow their revenue by experimenting with new plans and product offerings. Recurly helps our merchants to be able to recover 70% of their failed transactions on average and to automate their recurring billing and decision making. Today I'll be talking about the direct-to-consumer shift, the challenges of scaling your e-commerce experience, and what to think about from both a customer-facing and a back-end operational perspective. So starting with the direct-to-consumer shift, we all remember this, when in order to buy anything, you had to go to a mall or go to a shop in your town, and that was the only way to be able to purchase things. The mega trend over the past few years, and especially as COVID has changed the landscape, has been toward lots more shopping on an e-commerce perspective. So the question is why? Why has, have brands been shifting here and why have consumers been flocking to these models in, in such a big way? I think it starts with the brand being able to own their entire customer experience from the website that they visit, to the packaging that they receive and owning the, the very valuable customer data instead of giving it away to an aggregator or a wholesaler. Brands also have the opportunity to build a community, to build brand loyalty, and this helps them to drive the metrics that they care about, like customer lifetime value, their net promoter score, and the margins that they receive from their products. Furthermore, direct-to-consumer helps to enable a multi-channel approach so stores haven't completely gone away. We've all seen the Warby Parker stores and, and the likes um, of those. However, direct-to-consumer approach really helps uh, to be able to maintain a consistent brand experience across every different channel. Another mega trend in direct-to-consumer has been a shift to subscriptions. And this is really driven by economics. In traditional e-commerce, you have to pay to acquire a customer, and then they purchase something from you and don't necessarily interact with you again in the future. And the subscription movement has really turned this on its head and emphasized monetizing that initial customer acquisition cost and increasing the lifetime value of that customer. We're seeing it across many different industries right now, but especially in direct to consumer. So with that in mind, how do you take advantage of these mega trends? you have to find a way to be able to move online in, a, in an efficient manner. And there are many challenges to being able to do that. So you'll see this di diagram on the right. There are many different considerations. You know, you have to meet customers where they are, whether that's on a desktop computer, increasingly on tablets and mobile devices, and on to future different technologies like voice and uh, video recognition uh, that will be coming out in the coming decades. So how do you navigate that? It's really not easy. Uh, the traditional approach of say 10 years ago was you, you needed one platform which would manage your entire customer experience on the front end and also manage your operational experience on the back end. And the headless commerce approach has really turned that on its head and suggested that there's a better way to be able to do this because the challenges of having an all-in-one e-commerce platform are, are really that once you start to scale, once you start to offer different customer experiences, those experiences break down and become degraded. You don't have very much flexibility in terms of the personalization that you can ask to offer to customers. You don't have much flexibility in the types of engaging experiences that you can create with these customers when they visit your website. It takes a long time to be able to implement new buying patterns, new payment options. And this is something that businesses today just can't afford to wait for. They need to be able to add them quickly, need to be able to respond to an ever-changing and ever more competitive market. So consider this. In a survey that Gartner did of enterprise CIOs in 2018, 79% of CIOs were considering an API-based or a headless commerce architecture. And you can think about this in a similar context to the SaaS industry where best in breed software has been the trend over the last 10 to 15 years, where you choose a system for a specific purpose, not for its suite of applications, 
but for how it solves a specific need. So in e-commerce, a headless commerce approach might look like using a different system for your content management system, which your customers will see when they visit your website, than your product catalog system, a different system for your order management system than for your warehouse and fulfillment systems. In taking this a step further, there are many different steps throughout the customer journey and the operational journey that you need to consider. And just a few of them are listed here. But from an end customer perspective, you need to consider what does the landing page look like? Where are the assets hosted? Where is the information about the products in the product catalog? How do you offer loyalty programs or coupons to your customers to incentivize them to come back? How do you ensure that they have a seamless and efficient shopping cart and checkout experience? How do you have an identity management platform to have one view of your customer throughout your stack? And from an op operational perspective, if they're entering into a long-term engagement with you, how do you bill them? How do you ensure that the customer is billed for the right things every month or every quarter or every year? How do you ensure that their payment information is up to date? How do you ensure that their orders have been shipped over time, that they've been fulfilled? And finally, how do you offer them best in class customer support and customer care such that they know exactly where their things are and when they can expect to receive them? And of course, there are many different ways to be able to address these with technologies. There are some systems that try to do various portions of these stacks, but and in a headless commerce architecture, you really have flexibility over how you want to choose your systems. And this flexibility is the key because platforms that are built for a headless commerce experience offer best in class developer experiences and APIs such that from an end customer perspective, they have a seamless experience, but from an operational perspective, all of your systems are in sync and talk to one, one another efficiently. If you're considering adding a subscription component to your business, then consider this. In traditional e-commerce, payments are relatively straightforward. You know how much you're going to charge a customer. You authorize that amount and then you capture it. But in a subscription context, involuntary churn becomes a very large concern for businesses. And this can really eat into your margins, especially in an e-commerce context. So as you're considering the move into subscriptions and increasing customer lifetime value, consider finding a partner who can help you scale, who can help you navigate the complexities of working in a recurring revenue business. So just to wrap up, we've discussed today that the, the e-commerce and headless commerce architecture is inherently complex because the customer journey is varied. There's not a one size fits all approach and brands are approaching this in many different ways and are really looking to make their mark with their customer base on offering a better customer experience. So as you're considering how to offer that best in class experience, think about finding a partner who can help consult with you to help you scale and share the warnings that they've had working with other merchants. Thanks very much for your time. If you have any questions or would like to reach out to us, feel free to visit recurly.com for more information.